Chess.com just introduced their new Clash Royale themed bots and the strongest one is the Archer Queen at 2900 ELO. I wanted to test how strong this bot is so I made her play against three bots but every time the bot got higher and higher in ELO. We started off with Pablo who is 1600 but then we went to Hikaru who is 2820 rated and for the finale she has to face Stockfish 16, which is 3600 rated. And I got some brilliant moves to show you. I got some insane tactics to show you some perfect end games. So let's just jump into the games. So first game, we got Pablo, who is 1600. Pretty solid bot. And in this game, you will see that the opening doesn't really matter, okay? We get D4, we get D6, and then we get C4. And I thought we were gonna see the red defense, which is E5. And after takes, takes, queen takes, king takes, the engine says it's zeros, but please don't play the red defense, okay? You're gonna I hate yourself we don't really get the rat but we get something similar to it archer queen tries to fianchito the bishops and pablo is seemingly way better out of this opening how is a 1600 bot playing a better opening than a 2900 bot look at this pablo is like plus one he has the full control of the center everything just looks like it makes sense and now we get this move e5 and we can still take on e5 but that's not what we get we get the bishop attacking the queen and here you have a bunch of options you can develop a knight put a bishop here he pushes the pawn the best one is probably just to develop the knight because if you take i just take with a knight and i keep a perfect structure and i can castle on the next move i develop a piece but here is where pablo kind of took his opening advantage and started going a bit crazy queen a4 what does this move do brother i cannot tell you for the life of me what does this attack what does this spin like what just why and our archer queen here just decides to take the pawn in the center we get knight takes and we get castles now pablo still has a lot of control in the position right he has pawns in the center he has active knights he can castle on the next few moves but what the archer queen has is 1300 more elo pablo develops a bishop wanting to castle on this side but that's just not gonna happen okay we get the knight jumping in attacking the queen attacking this pawn as well putting more pressure on it this knight is like really well placed because it's held by the pawn so the queen goes back and now we get queen t8 and just putting more pressure in the center causing pablo to panic a little bit okay pablo plays f3 he's like oh my god i gotta protect the center i gotta protect this pawn but this actually doesn't protect anything because in this position the archer queen boop sacrifices a knight ski bro and this is why queen to e8 was an important move because the bishop doesn't hit the queen anymore so you can sacrifice your knight because after the pawn takes your bishop can now take this knight and the position is slowly falling apart for pablo he can no longer castle and a lot of black pieces are in white's territory so pablo is like oh dude if i can't castle short i'm gonna castle long i still need to be safe but that was one of the biggest mistakes he made because now there's bishop takes knight and you might be like oh, why is this a good move i just take with the queen you cannot take with the queen because if you take uh gg bro i fork you i hit the bishop and there's actually no way to guard this bishop right if you try this i mean you lose a queen and you look like a bozo and if you think you're really smart and you go queen to e3 to guard the bishop well, I still take your bishop, okay? And if you take my queen, I just take with the rook and I'm up a bishop. And if you take my knight, I take your bishop and you're still down a piece. So in this position, Pablo is forced to take with the pawn. Now Pablo has doubled pawns, very bad pawn structure, right? The pawns are very much isolated. It's kind of like pawn islands. And the king is very weak. Look at this king. I mean, it has no protection. And the archer queen is going to take a big advantage of this. First of all, the archer queen uses the bishop, right? It, this might seem like a small move, but on the next move, we see that this bishop that's protected by the knight and the queen is just going to win an exchange here, going to win a rook so we take take and now archer queen is just gonna bring all the pieces okay brings the queen brings the knight back and brings the rook in and look at this position beautiful stuff and you might look at this and say yeah pablo is like down material but there's no really good way to infiltrate right because on the next move we get a rook to b2 so there's no checks you can't really take anything the queen is kind of holding everything together but on the next move we're gonna see some insane tactics okay so we get rook to e8 doubling up and you still might say there's no way to infiltrate this bishop is holding the pawn and the pawn is holding the bishop but as soon as pablo brought the dark sword bishop back to attack the rook the best move here is not to go back with your rook it is rather to <coughs> let me clear my throat sacrifice the rook yes you do sacrifice the rook you basically bishop takes and now you take the bishop so you get a piece and you get a pawn but the most important thing is now your pieces are infiltrating you're attacking the bishop you're attacking the queen this pawn behind the queen you're threatening checks okay this is gonna fall if the queen moves everything is gonna fall apart here so now the queen moves trying so hard to like maybe make an attack maybe try to go for a checkmate but giga the archer queen uh sacrifices the rook again just takes the bishop what a gangster look at these tactics and now pablo is obviously like oh my god how did i miss that he takes the rook and gets forked look at this royal fork 
fork, we fork everything in the position. And as soon as the queen falls, everything else is gonna fall. Yes, you take the B2 pawn. Good job, dude. I take with check. This is mate on the next move, so you have to go back with the rook to defend it. But I simply just, oh my god, look at this. Just so many tactics. So just I just take everything. And I want you guys to see the checkmate here, because the checkmate is actually really cool. Okay, so we get queen to h1 check. The king is forced to move up. And now look at this. h6 just says shh silent killer in the position because whatever you do on the next move pawn to f5 is checkmate what a tactical game by archer queen but this is pablo and while pablo is a decent bot yes i can beat pablo with my eyes closed and my left hand so i want to see archer queen play against a stronger bot and what better bot do we have on chess.com than hikaru bot this is the guy that mittens couldn't beat right so can the archer queen get a win against hikaru archer queen is playing with the black pieces and hikaru starts the game in typical hikaru fashion on chess.com which is Hifi and Cheetos, okay? Hifi and Cheetos. And Archer Queen is just trying to fight for the center. And if you ever watch Title Tuesday and Hikaru play, you know that he does really well in these positions where he has a Fiend Shadow Bishop. But we get E4. The Knight now has to move and moves to the center. But we get takes. Bishop takes. Obviously, you don't want to take with the pawn. This is just so ugly. You Fiend Shadow the Bishop. You don't want to close it in with a pawn. But look at this. Black is going to castle on the next move. Black has a pawn in the center. And Hikaru is playing really aggressively here. So we get the pawn attacking the Bishop. And Hikaru here does something really weird. Now, I'm just a bald guy on the the internet but instead of just going back which is i i thought it was the best move he decides to take and i thought this was a bit messy because after bishop takes i mean this is under attack you have to develop the knight and then i was thinking even bishop takes c3 and you have to play with this ugly structure here right but that's not what happens in the game completely we do get bishop takes we do get the knight developing but black just decides to castle okay the queen moves the rook now goes to the e file pretty typical stuff and now archer queen decides to take which i thought was really weird why not take when you could double the pawns and here queen takes c3 is just the best move you just take with the queen i mean you would take with the queen i would take with the queen hikaru bot takes with the pawn i don't know if hikaru bot smoked some weed i don't know if hikaru bot wants the activity i have no idea what's happening but it takes with the pawn okay so first of all we push the pawn connect these pawns okay nothing too special right but hikaru goes h4 hikaru wants to go for the kill very much in hikaru style to play this aggressive but now we get the queen going to f6 and white castles short well this pawn is kind of hanging right you can take this and after takes you did not lose a pawn but this looks just very scary right it looks like there's gonna be an attack here in the future with some moves uh but that's not what happens instead we get rook to d8 and now hikaru starts pushing these pawns and i'm a bit worried obviously hikaru bot is the strongest bot on chance to come but the decisions so far haven't been great let's be honest and we can also see that archer queen has all the pawns on dark squares even though it doesn't have a dark square bishop that means the pawns control a lot of the dark squares on the board and the light square bishop has a lot of room to move right if you look at white this bishop kind of sucks and it cannot go here it cannot go here it's very limited in the squares that it can go to right we get rook to e1 and now h6 and look at this hikaru is trying to double up the rooks and trying to win the d pawn but after this bishop moves you're not winning the d pawn first of all and stuff gets really scary where archer queen well, it just starts an attack, and everything is on this side. It's kind of hard for Hikaru to counterattack, right, uh, Black's King, but it's very easy for Black to attack White's King, right? All the pieces are already here, and stuff can get pretty scary pretty quickly for Hikaru. I mean, think to H8 in the future after you trade away some pawns, the Rooks can come in, the Queen can come in, the Bishop can come in. It's looking really, really scary, and Hikaru kind of just ignores this attack. I mean, he plays H5 trying to shut it down, but look at this F5. I'm just gonna continue to push. You move the Rook, but I don't care. I'm just continuing this attack, okay? I'm now targeting the weak pawn you cannot really push to defend it because i would just take it and murder you and hikaru tries to infiltrate the position with the rook trying to attack this f pawn which is pinned to the queen right you cannot move the f pawn otherwise you lose the queen and the rook and the bishop are attacking it but simply g4 i kick your bishop out the bishop has to move and i'm winning this pawn and suddenly the position is collapsing archer queen is up a pawn but it's much worse than that the rooks double up here wanting something but there's simply just nothing in this position. And you're going to see a brilliant move very soon here. Okay, so we get B5. We obviously just take on B5. We don't even have to think about it. And Hikaru here decides to be really practical and go to the A file to attack the A pawn. But the Archer Queen has an insane tactic brewing up. Okay, so she goes Rook to B8. Obviously not targeting this yet, but in the future. So we get takes. And you might be like, why did Archer Queen just give up a pawn? She just won a pawn. Why did she give up the A pawn? But also she has an insane combo really soon. Okay, so Rook to E7. Obviously wanting 
tried to guard the a pawn and also double the rooks so the rook goes back but now we get rook to b6 and the rook's doubling so now hikaru doubles the rooks and he says i'm gonna win the a pawn i'm not gonna let you have any fun in this position but hikaru doesn't know that the archer queen is gonna unleash a bomb in this position with bishop take c4 brilliant move look at this if you take the bishop you lose your queen and it's just game over right so you have to go back with the rook to prevent this but now you lose another pawn and i hit your queen you've lost two pawns in an end game and where every pawn is critical so the queen moves but the bishop just simply goes back and look hikaru wants a bishop trade archer queen says okay you can have a bishop trade but on my terms if you take i'm gonna get a pass pawn so hikaru takes the a pawn and we get h4 archer queen doesn't even care that she lost the pawn here she's like okay it's chill whatever i'm gonna play h4 so we get takes the king starts walking in obviously the queen can win this pawn and start a huge attack so we get a bishop trade right now archer queen also has a pass pawn that's gonna be protected over here boom we get takes and now look at this so we get two connected pass pawns gonna be two reconnected we were gonna win this pawn eventually right it's really easy to win this pawn but also the whole position is just falling apart so the rook comes in but it's too late we get checked the king moves up and we're gonna go for a queen trade very soon so we get check we get takes we get pawn takes over here right to keep the king out but also very important because if the king moves up we can also give this check and then anchor the rook with a pawn so now the king is completely out of this end game a king is very important in end games especially rook and pawn end games right so this king is out of the game we're gonna win this pawn and i just have three pawns that are pushing okay you're not stopping them and we just push and we just win all the pawns and we just push look at this we're gonna get promotion right here right now now you do have this check but it doesn't really matter because after you take my queen i take your rook and i have two pawns that are gonna promote and i make a queen and it's all over i have maiden one or maiden two anywhere on the board and this is how the game ends archer queen does what men's couldn't do which is defeat hikaru with the black pieces so how does archer queen actually stack up against the king of bots currently which is stockfish 16 well that game was also crazy so let's jump into that so we have the archer queen and stockfish 16 stockfish is 35 60 okay i'm tired of kids in the comments telling me stockfish is 4000 rated you can literally check okay you click on settings and maximum strength of stockfish on your browser is 35 60 okay so what kind of opening does stockfish play well we get d4 and we get d5 and we get something that's called the Le levinsky attack i can't really pronounce it it looks like somebody tried to play the London and mouse slip, but uh, I, apparently the Archer Queen likes to play this. And Stockfish is just gonna develop normally, right? Put a knight in the center and just try to bully this bishop, okay? It bullies the bishop, the bishop goes back, but Stockfish, unlike humans, doesn't really care about principles in chess. So he just continues bullying the pieces. It bullies this knight as well. The knight has to go on the rim. Stockfish takes the center, we get the knight developing, and look how much control Stockfish has of the center. Boom, boom, everywhere. All of the pawns, all of the squares, okay? And we get bishop to e2. And now Archer Queen decides to take in the center, which completely just blunders the knight that's on the edge of the border. We get bishop takes, right? This is guarded by the queen, but it's not a full piece blunder like we think because the queen takes the center pawn. And now we get bishop takes bishop, pawn takes. You're down one point of material here, but this position is just so much easier to play for Stockfish. And Stockfish also is not rushing anywhere with this trade, right? It just develops a knight hitting the queen. Uh, this queen is protected by the knight, so you could still castle if you want to in the future. So now Archer Queen has to make a decision. Do you take? Well, Archer Queen decides not to take. It moves the queen, but the queen just gets bullied out of existence by this A pawn. And now we get another pawn in the center. So now Stockfish is up two pawns, but it's gonna get a lot uglier than this. The rook attacks the queen. The only move in this position is to block with the bishop. Because if you block with the knight, now the queen sneaks in. This is pinned and this is under attack. And your position just completely falls apart. Look at this position and tell me what piece can you actually move. You can't move any pieces. You can basically just push pawns. So the archer queen now pushes the pawn. Stockfish also pushes the pawn and just lets archer queen take here. It doesn't even try to take back. It won two pawns. It just gave up a whole pawn for apparently no good reason. But there is a really good reason, okay? So this pawn is continuing to... To push attacking the knight the knight is obviously gonna move right so the knight jumps into the center we get a knight trade knight takes pawn takes and now rook takes pawn and stockfish is officially not up any pawns the material is equal and i was thinking why is stockfish just giving up pawns it just won those two pawns why did it give it up well turns out stockfish is a lot smarter than a bald guy on youtube making chess videos and stockfish just decides to castle here and apparently this attack that's coming is gonna be so devastating that it's worth giving up two pawns for okay but you might say where is the attack well archer queen decides to bring the rook to h5 trying to attack this knight trying to do something but rook to e8 and now suddenly 
suddenly any knight move is this cover check my queen is really active right the bishop is really active this rook is really active you have a lot of questions to answer if you're archer queen so archer queen decides to block any discovered checks by you know blocking with the bishop but now stockfish just shows how cold-blooded it is just a simple move bishop to b5 okay we get a rook trait here you have only two moves stockfish decides to take with the king i was thinking just taking with the queen looks natural and looks normal both are apparently the same but stockfish is like oh yes but taking with the queen gives me 0 0.03 advantage 70 moves later i have no idea both look good to me but stockfish is the smarter one here obviously archer queen is like i need to like dampen this attack or i'm gonna die so it tries to kick the knight out but we have the world's greatest move called en passant basically you take we get f takes and now a gangster move by stockfish knight takes f3 and you might say how is this possibly a good move can the queen not just take the knight and that is true and that's what happens in the game we're gonna look at that but what are your alternatives here if we go king to d1 i mean i just take your bishop this is guarded by the rook with check and i defend my knight so you just die instantly if you move the king to d1 if you move to f1 well apparently it's made in nine moves uh, and you can find made in nine in a classical game or if you're stockfish you just instantly know it's made in nine because you're a gangster like that but in the game we get queen takes and now we get rook takes e2 and like what are you gonna do in this position if you go to d1 i mean you just get checkmated if you go to f1 you get checkmated but in 10 moves so your only option is to really take with a queen and then uh sacrifice it for a rook and a bishop and that is what we get in the game so now we're in an end game with a queen a rook and archer queen has more pawns so the difference in material is only plus two for stockfish but a queen is much easier to play an end game with than a rook and we can see that right away because you lose a pawn with check and you're gonna get checked a bunch of times you're gonna lose another pawn already this advantage is plus four stockfish can just win this without even going for more material but stockfish of course goes for more material with these checks right it decides to take another pawn so now it's up five points of material all in pawns and it has connected passers you're just not gonna win this so it gives more checks and it decides to just win the rook right it doesn't just take the rook right away even though it completely can't take the rook right away because these two connected passers are way too fast and way too strong but what it decides to do is give another check and now give a pawn check look at this so it wins the rook without losing the queen stockfish is surgical when it comes to end games it never messes up anything so we get takes and, and now it's just a simple game of conversion i'm not gonna bore you with this it just makes two queens and checkmate on the next move so stockfish completely destroys the archer queen but we've proven in this video that this bot is insanely strong beating pablo with ease and actually even clapping hikaru's cheeks with the black pieces and boys if you want to see another insane video with bots watch the time i played chess bots but every 10 moves it was a different random bot it could be everybody from martin to hikaru that video was crazy so watch that and i'll see you boys in the next one bye